Hi, and welcome to our YouTube channel. Today I'm joined by our researcher, David Hearn. So, David, the Lib Dems have just elected their fourth leader in five years this morning. Sir Ed Davey is the new leader. So, what do you think this means for Lib Dems then and their possible future election chances? Well, I think to a certain extent, having been acting leader, um, there's a degree of uh, continuity rather than change. That, that makes some sense. They've had a lot of churn in terms of recent leadership changes over the past few years, as you've alluded to. Um, in terms of their election chances, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I mean, there's obviously a negative for, for some um, who feel that the Liberal Democrats are tainted by their um, association with the coalition, uh, with the coalition years, and obviously Ed Davey was part of that. Um, that being said, you know, there are many others who, who will support them. So um, I'm not convinced um, in terms of a dramatic improvement in their electoral fortunes. So workers on low incomes in parts of England where there are high rates of coronavirus will be able to claim up to £182 if they have to self-isolate. Those who claim universal credit or working tax credit and cannot work from home will be able to get the money, which is equal to £13 a day. Uh, Greater Manchester Mayor Andy Burnham has said the payment doesn't go nowhere near far enough, uh, adding people need full pay. So do you think the government is doing enough? I think they missed a trick. Um, and it's pretty clear that the, that the measures in question are fairly meagre. Um, uh, to be honest, in light of the billions and billions and billions of pounds that we've thrown at uh, the job retention scheme and many others, this seems penny pinching and it's needless. Um, it's, I, I cannot understand why the government are not uh, acting considerably more aggressively. One of the issues here is that actually £13 a day more or less equals statutory sick pay and it's not enough to live off. It's as simple as that. Um, it really is that straightforward. Um, so at that point, you need to ask what, what more can you do? What more should you do? And the answer is quite a lot. So Boris Johnson has blamed the mutant algorithm for the, exa for the exams fiasco, sorry, after previously saying that the results were dependable and robust. The National Education Union called the Prime Minister brazen after he, after he appeared to shrug off responsibility for the fiasco. So do you think there's a possibility maybe that young people affected by this won't exactly be showing their support for the Tories in the future and maybe the next election? Uh, yeah, I mean, look, the, the, one of the, it was a daft comment. Um, you know, I think it was intended as a joke. I, I hope it was intended as a joke. Um, if it wasn't a joke, then it displays a serious misunderstanding of what an algorithm is and how such things work. Um, you know, it's, it's a computer program, right? You, you program it to, to give you a certain set of results. You program uh, a set of data and you get, you get some results out. It's as simple as that. If there's something wrong, then, you know, that's to do with how you programmed it. In terms of young people and the Conservative Party, I think it's fair to say that young people were not exactly flocking to the Tories in droves. I can't see this helping. Um, but I think where it's more likely to hurt their electoral chances in the is in the perceptions of parents and grandparents um, who no doubt will look at this and uh, and be wary. Um, so to my mind, that's the much greater, certainly immediate term electoral challenge they face. Um, but there's no question about it that over the very, very long term, if the trends continue as they are, they're going to face serious electoral consequences because it's rare to find someone under 30 who votes Tory. Thanks for joining us, David. Thank you.